yes uh, good morning students today uh, i am going to explain the second chapter starting this second chapter and in this chapter i will discuss the uh, concept of your fading the concept of fading concept of fading then second concept i will today discuss with you that is diversity diversity and third one is here diversity combining method so this is your second chapter in your syllabus this is your second chapter so firstly i will explain you the concept of your fading then uh, diversity and the third one is your diversity combining methods so one by one i will explain you so going further starting with the very first concept that is fading okay firstly we should know that what is fading actually fading is a variation of attenuation of a signal with various variables means attenuation of the signals if with the use of various va variables is known as your is known as your uh, your fading so also the these variables actually include the time geographical position and your radio frequency also and also a fading channel is a communication channel that experiences the fading in other words in uh, we can say that the the signal strength of that signal is is your decreased or the signal is your attenuated that is known as your fading that is known as your fading and this is the very much criti uh, critical uh, your concept in your wireless communication and fading in other language we can also define the fading as it is an ionospheric abnormality means you know that we can uh, divide our environment in the ionospheric area also so fading is also prominent in the, is a actually uh, ionospheric ionospheric abnormality so fading actually show the fluctuation so fading actually show the fluctuation on the received signal means your signal is is in the fluctuated form and and your random variation means there are random variations in the received signal that is called your fading and fading also produce the actually interference of two waves also if we have two waves then interference between these two waves is also known as the effect of your fading so fading actually refers to the fluctuations in signal strength when received in the receiver that is known as your fading now this is the fading what is fading actually attenuation of the signal strength due to the fluctuations in the signal at the receiver now what are the various causes means what are the reasons behind that why fading is uh, is come into the existence next is your causes of your fading okay there are so many cause of fading uh, first is your fading is caused by actually the multi path okay a multi path effect means in which the signal uh, a signal is transmitted from a transmitter and uh, this signal may can, may have multiple copies transversing different path to the reach at the receiver means multiple means signal is one only and one, only one is signal transmitted but repetition of that signal is received at the receiver by the by through the your multi path so this is also this is the one cause of your 
fading now the second cause of the fading is your speed of actually surrounding speed of actually surrounding objects uh, that is also cause or factor which influence the fading if the surrounding objects move at a greater than the mobile then the effect termine uh, effect it, the then this effect dominate the small scale fading actually if your object is your surrounding objects are in the moving so in that case also small scale fading which is the one of the type of the fading will be occur because the signal due to the movement will be fluctuate so also i have told you that the fluctuations in signal fluctuations in signal is in signal strength is also known as your fading and due to this surrounding as object that type of fading particular fading is known as your small scale fading now come on to the next next is your fading cause is fading can be caused due to the natural weather disturbances also means there are so many natural your weather disturbances such as rainfall snow fog and extremely cold and over a warm earth means environmental effects also causes the fading in case of your warm your cold environment your rainfall fog and this in this conditions this also causing the effects of the fading because the due to these where your signal strength will be attenuated now come on to the next cause is your uh, fading can also be created by man man made disturbances such as irrigation irregular earth surfaces and various varying the terrains means your area is you are not uh, smooth so uh, according to the varying the terrain also then uh, also with the your man made disturbances like irrigation if you are doing and your uh, irregular uh, earth surface is also so these all are the uh, your uh, causes of your fading now the last one affect this your fading is also caused by the variation in the heights and density of the ionization means uh, in the ionospheric in the ionospheric uh, uh, because it is in, it is an ionospheric abnormality Uh, that's why uh, due to that factor variation in the height actually there is a variation in the height and the density of the ionization in the ionospheric uh, layer uh, then this also causes the effect of fading uh, effect of sorry fading so also there are also other effects like shadowing and your path loss these all affect the your signal path which is received at the receiver now i will make the ionospheric diagram this is the ionospheric this is e layer this is f this is your path this is your this is your path then is your here transmitter is there Here receiver is here. There T X is the transmitter. R X is your receiver. If I am sending a signal from the transmitter to the receiver, then it will go to the E layer. Then come back to here this. So then again, this is this shows the multi path. So again, it will go there and it will receive by now transmitter. So multi path means. Firstly, this signal will go to this, then then reflects it back, go to the earth, then again reflection, then goes to the receiver. So this is your actually earth. This is your earth, and this is your F layer. Now this is the signal number one. The second signal is if I am sending my signal to the if i am sending my signal to the layer number 2 layer number 2 then it will come back this is the second number signal 
this will come back to the receiver after the reflection so this is the another approach so there is a multi path a signal is approaches to the receiver which is transmitted to the transmitter uh, and approaches to the receiver uh, by by through the multi path so this is the this is your uh, cause of the biggest cause of your uh, uh, this is the biggest cause uh, cause of your fading and this is called single hole if we have a transmitter uh, signal one is goes to this so this is called as single hole and this is your second hole so your signal is in the your sending to the different multi path so the signal is transmitted by a transmitter and it follows the different path to arrive at the receiver as i have seen in the diagram the received signal followed by the different path and it is the vector sum actually actually at the receiver it is the vector sum of all the received waves means in the receiver we will get the vector sum of all the signals which are which are uh, received by the receiver uh, through the different path so then the signal actually waves transmitted from the transmitter uh, at the same time but received at the receiver at different time means if i am uh, sending the signal one it will reaches to the different time okay so if it will go through this path then different time will be taken if it is go through from the multiple hopes then it will take the more time if it will transmit from the directly from the transmitter to the receiver in a single hope then it will take the less time so so uh, our signal reaches at the receiver at different time because the signal follows the different path and the fading occurs in high frequency or short wave means uh in high frequency signals high frequency signals uh, we are uh, 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 we are uh, actually facing the more fading and high frequency means in the uh, in the your wavelength it will be your short waves and your changes in the signal strength is uh, uh, our signal is changes between the strength 10 dB 10 dB to 20 dB, 20 dB. In the signal strength, there will be a this much change. So fading, actually, we have seen that fading, uh, your uh, variation measures in the dB. So in another way, we can also say that uh, path loss, we are shadowing. your multi path these all facts if we will combine then after this the signal which is uh, observed at the receiver side it will be your composition of all the fading components so i will now make the diagram which uh, which shows the multiple your fading parameters now come on to the next is here i will draw the diagram first is your signal path here is your signal path signal path here and this is the signal your path loss is there and this is distance in linear scale second is your due to the shadowing this signal is sent 
Here again, signal part. Then on this axis, again, this is your distance, linear scale. Then third is your third is your multipath. So in this, the signal variation will this like this. Again, here is your signal path. Then distance in linear scale. So as you have seen in three diagrams, you can see that signal seemed from the, using the path loss, using the shadow effect, using your your multipath, this is your multipath, multipath, and your receiver, and your receiver will receive these three in addition. And I will get my final result will be your final signal power received due to these effects which affect the fading that is signal strength. So after combining the path loss, shadowing and multipath effect then I will get this means submission of all these three will be received on your receiver and this is the real this picture shows the real fading real fading real observed fading profile real observed Fading profile. Profile. And here is your distance. So, this was the concept of your introduction about the fading effect. Now, come on to the next the various types of fading. Now come on to the next concept under this. Firstly, I, I have I we covered the concept of fading. What is fading? Then what are the various causes of fading? And which type of your signal will be received? Means it will be the vector sum of all the signals. Then the now under this concept, we will do the next piece here types of fading types of fading actually fading is further classified into two parts one is your large scale fading second is your small scale fading Now, large scale fading is due to your path loss and your shadowing effect. As I have already discussed with you in the previous diagram. And your small scale fading, your small scale fading is further divided into two parts due to the multipath delay spread multipath 
डिले सप्रेड एंड सेकेंड इज योर डॉपलर सप्रेड दैट इज ड्यू टू दूविंग ऑब्जेक्ट now this is this multipath fading delay spread fading is due small scale fading is actually affected by the multipath delay spread and means due to the multipath the signal is received uh the signal is received as uh, the same signal is received uh through the different multi paths at the receiver so in second case due to the moving surrounding objects moving of the surrounding objects small scale fading is caused by these two and your large scale fading is due to your path loss and shadowing which i have already these all i have already explained now multipath due to the multipath delay spread this is further divided into two parts of fading first is your flat fading flat fading and second is your frequency selective fading frequency selective frequency selective fading next is here due to the doppler spread we have two types of gain fading first is your fast fading second is your slow fading slow second is your slow fading second is your slow fading so the main causes for the your fading is here you can see that uh, due to the that we have large scale fading small scale fading then also fast delay and delay uh, sorry fast fading slow fading flat fading and these all now i will explain it one by one uh, one by one i will explain it so small scale fading actually based upon the multi path time delay spread as as you have seen in this and here and here second one is due to the here path loss so as you can see in the diagram small scale fading is due to your small scale fading is due to the, the two factors one is your multipath delay spread and second is your doppler spread so next is here that is what the divided into flat fading and frequency selective fading and in large scale fading it is due to the your signal attenuation due can it can be your signal attenuation means that is due to the shading effect also second one cause is your path loss and this is further actually you can see this is due to the effect of your path loss your signal attenuation now i will discuss these all one by one now first is your large scale fading first is your large scale fading large scale fading as you know that 
Large scale trading can be caused by your shadowing effect, your your signal transmission, or your path loss. So, large scale trading in the case of your large scale trading, when an obstacle comes in between, when in case of your large scale trading. it occurs when an obstacle comes in between the transmitter and the receiver this interference type causes a significant amount of your interference or this interference type causes a significant amount of your signal frequency reduction and the reason behind is this em wave that is electromagnetic wave is blocked by the obstacle means that in case of your we can have the obstacle like your higher buildings uh, high height buildings so it is related to the large fluctuations of the signal over the distance so that's why this is known as your this is known as your large scale fading because large fluctuations are there now the causes for that is your path loss and second is your shadowing effect shadowing effect or your you can shadowing effect or path loss is also known as your signal attenuation effect signal attenuation okay now firstly i will explain the path loss actually we know that the free path free space path loss can be described using the formula pt by i will explain the path loss firstly in this case transmitted path Ratio of transmitted part to the received part is given by four pi d square divided by lambda square, where P T is the transmitted part, P R is your received part, and D is the distance between the transmitting and the receiving antenna, and C. C is uh, it can be also write in the form of your frequency that is four pi d square. We know that lambda is c by f, so c square f square. So c is the speed of light, which we can write the value for that is c is c into ten raised to power eight meter per second. C is C is to C to ten is to power eight meter per second. So from this equation, it implies that transmitted signal attenuates over a distance as the signal is being spread over the large and large area, large and large area from the transmit end towards the receiver end. So this effect is here due to the path loss. so this is the one cause of your large scale fading in further slides i will also show the path loss how is it it can be depict in the in the your reality now the second cause is this is also known as your signal attenuation now the second cause is i can also write the formula 4 pi d f Whole uh, four pi d f your square. That is your that is your sorry whole square. So I can write uh, like this. This is your I can write like this. So this will not this the whole square. So four pi d f whole square divided by your lambda square. This is sorry. This is in the whole square. so now come on to the second is your shadowing effect large scale fading second cause is your shadowing effect means 
in that case we are facing the shadow shadow problem shadowing problem so that scattering shadowing can be there i will show you in the further slides also so now your shadowing loss can be done can be in the form of your scattering shadow due to the trees due to the reflection due to the multipath means from every point of we are getting the signal in the shadow form so in the case of shadowing it is actually observed that it is actually observed that in wireless communication shadowing is the derivation of your deviation means there is a deviation in the received power of em signal from the average value means its value will be deviate from the average value of the signal strength by with the effect of your shadowing so it is the result of obstacles over the path between the transmitter it can be result of your the obstacles due over the path between the transmitter and the receiver so this was the concept of your shadowing effect now come on to the this was the large scale fading so we have done your fading due to your uh, large scale fading that is your signal attenuation and path fault so in further slides i will show you the path loss and your signal your shadowing effect also shadowing in case of your path loss some sometime signal attenuation is more and more more and more prominent with the your shadowing effect not with the path loss as i have already discussed with you its effect signal attenuation is more in the case of your uh, in the case of your uh, shadowing so that's why we can say path loss is not called properly as the signal attenuation we will say shadowing is the another name for the signal attenuation in both cases whereas signal is attenuated but signal attenuation is term is mostly and mostly related to your shadowing effect now come on to the next type of fading that is your small scale small scale fading okay in the case of small scale fading it is based upon the two parts further one is the multipath time delay spread multipath time delay spread second is your based upon doppler spread okay now firstly we will know what is small fading then your what is uh, the causes what are the various causes that is multipath and doppler spread which are these so then we will go further in case of shedding sorry in case of your small fading actually the small fading is concerned with the rapid fluctuations of the received signal strength over very short distance and short time period means fluctuations in the signal is very rapidly fluctuations in the signal is very rapidly but but here it is for the short distance and for the short time so actually based on the multipath delay spread as you know that the signal is transmitted through, through the transmitter but same 
copies of that particular signal is received at the receiver in the in the multiple copies due to the multipath multipath can be in the single hop double hop three hops so this is the cause of your small scale fading due to that the signal which is received from the different part to the receiver particular signal which is received from different paths different multiple paths to the receiver is cause is affected by the different time delays the signal which is received with the single hop the time reaching time for that signal will be less if same signal is transmitted in the double hop single two hops means that that is using the reflection and then if signal is transmitted then it will be reflected back to the earth then again it will be transmitted to that particular layer then again it will be received by the receiver means in two hop then the time for that received signal will be more than the single hop so different time delay will be there so based on the multi path delay spread there are two types of small fading one is your flat fading and second is your frequency selective fading so multi path your multi path fading is further divided into two parts one is your flat fading and second is your frequency selective selective fading now concentrate on these two flat fading and your frequency selective fading i will write it again first one is your flat fading okay in case of flat fading in this case your signal bandwidth the bandwidth of the signal is always less than the channel bandwidth and your delay spread and second point is your delay spread means spread uh, delay in the time that is less than from the symbol spread now i will explain this fading with the help of this actually we know that multipath fading time depends on the propagation environment also so flat fading actually in the wireless channel is said to be flat fading because by name it is known as why it is why it is called as flat fading because in that case we have the constant gain and and the linear phase response over a bandwidth means your gain is constant and your phase linear phase response over a bandwidth which is the greater than the bandwidth of your transmitted signal means we have the constant gain and constant linear phase response in this case in the flat fading we have constant gain i am writing this constant gain and your constant linear phase response because by name it is known as here flat 
So your gain and phase response will be your constant. Actually, in this type of fading, all the frequency components of the received signal fluctuation is same in same proportion. Means all the frequency components faded in same proportion simultaneously. And this type of flat fading is also known as your non selective non selective fading so as i have written in the case of flat fading signal bandwidth is less than your channel bandwidth and your delay spread is less than your symbol spread your delay spread is less than your sorry symbol period Sorry, it, it should be your symbol spread, not symbol period. So, the effect of flat fading is seen as the decrease in the SNR signal to noise ratio is decreased when flat fading comes into existence. The flat fading channels are known as here. Amplitude varying channels or narrow band channels means the channels which is used in the flat fading they are known as your amplitude varying channels or narrow band channels. So this was the case with the your flat fading. Now we know that so this is the your flat fading. And now the delay spread because this fading is caused by the delay spread. So as we know that the different signal paths between the transmitter and the receiver corresponds to the different transmission times. So if I am sending an identical signal pulse from the transmitter to the receiver, then the multiple copies of the signals are received in the receiver at different moments. And the signal which is in on the shortest path, that is LOS, that is line of sight, means direct path is known as in your transmission is line of sight. It reaches the first, then other will be on the longer path. So the direct effect of Unsimultaneous received arrivals of all the signals actually causes the your spread of original signal in the time domain. That's why this fading comes under under into the delay spread, and that type of your spread in the time domain is called as your delay spread, and the example for the Fading depends upon the delay spread is your flat fading. Now, this was the flat fading. Now, come on to the your next is your frequency selective fading. In case of frequency selective fading, if the channel has a constant gain and linear phase response over a bandwidth that is smaller than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal. Then the years smaller than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, then the channel creates the frequency, frequency selective fading. Now I will. Go further with the frequency selective fading. This is also depends upon your delay spread, frequency selective fading. 
so in this signal bandwidth is less than signal bandwidth is less than channel bandwidth and delay spread is your less than in this case sorry signal bandwidth is greater than channel bandwidth and your symbol period is or you can say delay spread is greater than symbol period so delay spread is greater than symbol period so this is the one of the next type of your frequency selective fading under the category of your delay spread in the previous i already discussed with you in flat fading signal bandwidth is in flat fading signal bandwidth is is signal bandwidth was actually in that case was less than channel bandwidth by comparison you can know and your delay spread is in flat fading it is less than and in this case it is greater than your your delay spread sorry uh, your symbol period is means delay spread is less than delay spread or you can say delay spread is your less than symbol period your symbol period so you can see in the by comparison in flat fading signal bandwidth is less than channel bandwidth and your delay spread is less than symbol period but in case of frequency selective fading in case of frequency selective fading signal bandwidth is more than channel bandwidth and your delay spread is your delay spread is more than your symbol period we know that in case of flat fading we have constant gain constant linear phase response but in this case if the channel has a constant gain and linear phase response over a bandwidth that is smaller than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal then channel creates a frequency selective fading it creates the frequency selective fading on the received signal and it affects different spectral components or frequency component of a radio signal with different amplitudes so this is the your frequency selective fading now come on to the next is your next type of fading that is your small scale fading based upon your doppler spread now going further small scale fading next is small scale fading depends upon the doppler spread doppler spread on the basis of doppler spread we have two types of fading one is fast fading then is second is your slow fading before going further 
Firstly, I will explain what is the Doppler spread. Actually, we know that there are actually two criteria to measure the fading, channel fading. One is Doppler spread and second is multipath delay spread, which I have already discussed. Now I will explain the your Doppler spread. What is Doppler spread? In that case, the time varying fading, the time varying fading due to the motion of a scatter, motion of the scatter or motion of your transmitter or receiver means your transmitter or receiver are in the moving. So, time varying fading, time varying fading due to the motion of a uh, scatter or the motion of the transmitter or receiver or both results in the Doppler spread. Actually, it is caused by the time selective fading that is for the particular instant of time channel behaves as a fading channel and for rest it behaves as flat channel. Otherwise means, but at particular instance, it will be behave as your fading channel. Otherwise, it will be act as your flat channel. The types of fading which are depend upon the Doppler spread. One is your fast fading and second is your slow fading. Now, what is fast fading? In this case, the channel impulse response changes rapidly, means fastly. Channels impulse, impulse is a sort of signal. Channel impulse response changes rapidly within the symbol duration. That is your fast fading. In case of slow fading, channel impulse response changes at a your channel impulse response changes at a much slower than the transmitted sim symbol bandwidth. Then that type of fading is known as your slow fading. Now, as we know that here in the case of high, sorry, in case of fast fading, in the case of fast fading, we have the high Doppler spread. So I will explain fast fading in, in detail now. Fast fading. In this case, high Doppler spread is there and coherence time is less than the Coherence time is, is less than, you can say, high Doppler spread coherence time. High Doppler, high Doppler spread coherence time, time is less than your symbol period. Symbol period. It means that channel variations are faster than the your baseband signal variation. So this is the fast fading. Now we also know that in case of delay spread, actually it is a measure of your multipath regional proper communication channel. In general, it can be your interpreted the difference between the time of the arrival of, of the earliest significant multipath component and the time of the arrival of the last multipath component. Means it will take the difference, the signal which is received first 
and the time of arrival of the last signal which is received at the receiver and this due to the multipath component so in case of fast fading actually we know that this is due to the doppler spread so these doppler spread fading actually depends on we know that mobile speed that is the speed of the receiver with respect to the transmitter so in case of fast fading the fast fading is represented by the rapid fluctuation of the signal over the small areas that is bandwidth and when your signals arrive from all the directions in the plane fast fading will observed for all the directions of motion fast fading occurs when channel impulse response changes very rapidly with the symbol duration in this case we have high doppler spread then symbol period is your greater than coherence time or you can say coherence time is less than less than your symbol period and in this case signal variation is less than channel variation in this case signal variation is less than your channel variation channel variation so this type of fast fading occurs for very low data rates and it varies very quickly with the frequency fast fading originates due to the effects of a constructive and destructive interference patterns means we have the effect of constructive and destructive interference effect patterns which is caused due to the multipath so due to the multipath we can face the two inter two type of interferences the interference can be constructive type means it can be more or destructive type means it is in the decreasing order so this is the fast fading so in this we came to know that in case of fast fading symbol period or coherence symbol period is greater than your coherence time now what is coherence time coherence time is the time duration over which the channel impulse response is essentially invariant actually coherence time is the time duration over which the channel impulse response is essentially invariant if your symbol period of the baseband signal is greater than your coherence time baseband signal that is your original signal if your symbol period is is your more than your coherence time then the signal will be distorted since channel will change during the transmission of the signal i will make a diagram for the coherence time because this type of fast fading slow fading depends on the coherence time coherence time so this is the wave and this is your ts and this is your t c now further making the diagram coherence time also i am writing writing the formula t c is equal to your approximately 1 by fm 
coherence time and this coherence time this is signal is received so actually i am sending a signal f1 and this is f2 this is your t1 this is your t2 actually the difference between these two delta t is equal to t2 minus t1 and this mobile unit is moving from your this side to this side so you can see in the diagram i am transmitting the i am transmitting the signal so as you can see in the diagram this is the symbol period symbol time this is the pure coherence time so if your symbol period is symbol time or symbol period of the baseband signal is greater than your year of your coherence time this is the coherence time this is more than coherence time is less symbol symbol period is more in this case and if your symbol period is more than your coherence time then definitely your signal will be distorted and the, this is given by the formula 1 by fm and in the case of with the we know that doppler spread in case of that we are getting the delta effect and this signal reaches at the t1 time and this signal reaches at the t2 time then this is the difference between delta t is the difference between the t2 minus t1 as i uh, as i have already discussed with you it will take the difference between the two time delays so due uh, due to the multi path so this is the coherence time with this we have also the coherence bandwidth also so the coherence bandwidth also is there with this i will also explain further with you the coherence bandwidth so coherence bandwidth is denoted by your bc coherence bandwidth denoted by your bc coherence bandwidth this is denoted by bc okay what is coherence bandwidth because coherence time coherence bandwidth is related to your coherence so it is the range of frequencies over which the channel can be considered flat means all the frequency components facing the passes the equal gain and linear phase this also depends upon the this factor also depends upon the rms that is root mean square delay spread delay spread if two sinusoids are sending like f1 f2 in the like in the previous case and due to the multipath channel then receiver will receive this this is the receiver so receiver have the frequency separation like frequency time separation that is t2 minus t1 similarly we have the frequency separation as as f1 minus f2 f1 minus f2 so if i am sending the two sinusoid that is f1 f2 frequency separation greater than your coherence bandwidth they will actually affected quite differently by the channel so uh we know we came to know that uh this is the coherence bandwidth concept of your coherence bandwidth now come on to the 
next is your your with and uh, now i will go further this was the under the your fast fading now going to the next is your slow fading in the day because in that case we have also use of your coins bandwidth effect coins time so next is your slow fading slow fading okay as in case of slow fading we know that in this we have lower doppler spread lower doppler we have lower doppler spread okay first point is this second is coherence time coherence time in this case coherence time is greater than symbol period greater than symbol period and second is second is your signal variation or that is channel variation in this we are greater than channel variation signal variation third point is signal variation is much much greater than channel variation so in the case of slow fading if does not it does not vary quickly with the frequency it originates due to the effect of your mobility and it is the result of signal path change due to the shadowing and obstructions such as tree or buildings etc so slow fading actually results in low doppler spread coherence time is much much greater than symbol period then impulse response change is much slower than the transmitted signal so it means that channel variation smaller than the base signal variations the slow fading results in a loss of actually signal to noise ratio then some error correction coding and received in the javascript techniques are used to overcome the effects of slow fading actually if effect of over uh, fading will be overcome by the concept of your diversity we will explain this in the next lecture so as you know that doppler spread is based upon the time varying fading due to the motion of a scatter or the motion of the transmitter or receiver or both results in the doppler spread so this is also caused by the time selective fading that is for a particular instance of time channel behave as a fading channel and rest will be behave as a gear flat channel so with this concept further we will continue in the so further we will continue in the next lecture with this concept so doppler is your time varying fading due to the motion of your scatter motion of a scatter or your transmitter or your receiver so this is the time selecting fading also and for particular instance of time your channel behave as a fading channel and for rest it will be behave as a flat channel in further lecture i will continue with this concept again with the diagram of your fast fading and slow fading 
then last is your channel heading and i will also show you the next uh, ppd of your multi path and these all with this today i am ending my lecture uh, we will meet in the next lecture thank you